Hi, this is Roy Nostolt from the Flower Kings, and you are listening to Procast. Welcome back to another episode of the Procast. Today with us, the one and only Flower King, Roy Nostolt. Welcome to the Procast. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, well, we had a couple of years between Desolation Rose and Waiting for Miracles. Desolation Rose came out in 2013 and Waiting for Miracles in 2019, last year. And now one year after that, we already have a new Flower Kings album. So uh, I think we can all guess what kind of happened here. Maybe you want to, uh, yeah. Fill us in what the last year between those two releases, how that looked for you and, and how how you came up so quickly with a new studio yeah. album. <laughs> um, it's actually a, a couple of different things that come into play. And uh, I mean, one thing is that, uh, I mean, the situation as it is now for, not only for us, but for all musicians and for actually the the way things have changed for all of the world i mean all the western world is shut down so for a long long time people don't know if they they will get out this year or next year or even the year after that they're playing shows again so so it's a it's a very um strange situation for everyone you know everyone is just standing by and and waiting what will happen next so the reason we started working on an album this early or, or, or actually releasing an album now is that we probably would have spent a few more months playing shows and and doing festivals and stuff like that and then go in and write music and record it And that would have meant that we probably released the album sometime springtime next year. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, uh, if you can't go out and play shows, what can you do as a musician? You spend time at home and in your studio and you write music and you record it. So that that was, um, for us, came all very natural. It wasn't any pressure for, from record company or from within the band at all it was just like okay let, what shall we do now shall we just sit around and watch television and or read a book or shall we actually try to use the time we have now being at home and and record and write and be, be productive yeah absolutely uh it is also the second album with the new lineup uh, mm -hmm. that features uh sec caymans on keyboards and Mirko Di Maio on drums. Yeah. Uh, so I guess all all of the band is is it is the Flower Kings are spread throughout throughout the whole world now. Um, it's not, yeah. not not really a Sweden based band anymore, despite you still being there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so how did the recording process for for this look like uh, what was it different uh, compared uh to to waiting for miracles uh did you I, well, I, i'm it, guessing you you all recorded in your respective uh uh living place yeah yeah it's 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 different uh, but uh well let's put it this way when we recorded the waiting for miracles It was, we were all together in a studio in Stockholm doing the backing tracks. And uh, obviously we couldn't do this now because, I mean, we started the, the writing and doing the first demos and the recording uh, already in March, I think. And that was sort of the peak of, it's like all the world just stood still, you know, waiting yeah. for for a sign what will happen next. Will this be, will this be global? Will, will this go on for a month or a year or 10 years, no one didn't know anything, you know. So uh, the difference between this and the others is uh, in a way, uh, initially I would say when we 
to the backing tracks. It's different. But from that point, normally what you would do if it's Flower Kings or Transatlantic or any other band, I mean, it's usually you get together in the studio, track things together, and then people go home and, and do vocal overdubs, uh, polish a little bit on the guitar sounds or synth sounds or do another solo or, or do some overdubbing or percussion and stuff like that. So that that hasn't changed much, really. I think it's just like the, the, the very initial tracking of the basic tracks, you know, that was different this time. And it meant that, uh, for instance, we... we try to track the drums first uh, to a, a background that's made up of uh, a pretty uh, elaborate uh, demo that I like to make, you know, for, for Mirko, who's playing the drums. I think it's important for him to understand the dynamics of the song and the feel, you know, if it's, a, if it's supposed to sound big, if it's supposed to sound snappy and... and uh, Playful. T- tight. or Yeah, I mean, all, the, all these elements you know you have to understand when you're listening to a demo so i can just put down like an acoustic guitar and a tambourine that doesn't work <laughs> so he, he needs to have some kind of orchestration and some kind of feel for the the chorus where you know it's got to be a few harmony vocals you know so when he's sitting there and tracking the drums he needs to get the right feel for what he's playing to and what the end result will be so that meant a little bit of work for me, or for, for Zach, and so we need to do that first, and then Mir could track the drums. And then when we had we had the drum track, Jonas could track the bass, and, and also I think uh, uh, the uh, difficulties tracking drums in your home studio, because it's really, Mirko is now starting to build up his home studio in his rehearsal room, and you know, there's certain things that you need to learn about how to record drums. It's not always easy. It's like a kind kind of a difficult instrument to get a good sound, uh, knowing where to place the microphones, what kind of microphones you need to use, and how you set the levels, etc., and how you play the placement of microphones. So um, that took a little bit of time, but uh, eventually, uh, after the uh, doing this uh, usually on online or, or uh, just sending emails back and forth and he had to do test takes and stuff like that it can be done I mean nowadays it, it's the internet is very fast so you can send files you can track drums to a song and he can send it over to me in the, uh, in the morning and I'll get him some instructions later in you know in the after early afternoon or something like that and then he can track track the song again and the band can listen to it and maybe someone say okay i love that but maybe if you try another snare drum or uh, maybe towards the end you should play a little while or you you should play more or you know whatever so the communication works because the communication nowadays is so fast you know you can send from your phone or from your computer or your ipad or whatever and it's 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 instantly. You you don't have to send tapes <laughs> like in the old days. You have to send those uh, real to real tapes to someone, you know, and and they have to pick it up, you know, FedEx or whatever. <laughs> so so that's that's um, that actually helped us quite a bit, you know, the quick communication and um, you know it was different, but at the same time, as I said, uh, we've done a little bit of this before in in different recordings, sending stuff. Yeah, I, I can actually uh, from uh, that technical. Uh, what what I know about recording technique, I would uh, I can definitely uh, uh, see that drums uh, is probably one of the hardest instruments in a rock band to record at home, so to speak, because there's yeah, yeah so so yeah, many yeah, different yeah. Uh, uh, things you need to uh, know about it. Yeah, and, and we don't want to use, or, or I don't want to use, uh, some people, they record drums and then they put, they trigger, yes. I mean, whatever, they, they trigger new sounds for a kick drum, trigger new sounds. I, For my taste, that sounds a little bit too synthetic, I think, you know. It, yeah, it takes, uh, 
it takes uh, some skill and it takes some special equipment and uh, but in the end uh, and I, I you know also uh, we were talking about some people just record drums and they then they put trigger sounds on it you know but then it's not I think it's important to to create your own sounds from your from your own drums from your own synthesizers you do your own prog- programming etc etc uh, that kind of make it more unique and uh, it's yeah. just one one of those sounds you listen to any band you listen to the police you have Stuart copeland's drum sound is very you can tell right away that's Stuart copeland you know or bill bruford the way his drum sounded back yeah. in the day or even the beatles the ringo got a great sound you know on, on most of the albums but um, towards the end he had this very uh, very special drum sound, I think. Great sound on Abbey Road, stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, trigger drums wouldn't really match the Flower King sound at all, I, I think. <laughs> no, 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 not not really. It's uh, it's. I know it's it's. Uh, there's lots of opinions about it, and some people want drums really loud and in your face and and fat and compressed and. Uh, and uh, to me, because probably I think because I'm coming, starting to listen to music uh, in a different time, you know, in the 60s. So I always loved. You have to remember that a lot of these drummers in in the bands, like Mitch Mitchell, who was with Jimi Hendrix, John Heisman, who who was with Colosseum at the time, I think, they were, and even Ginger Baker with Cream, you know. Mm-hmm. They were in rock bands, but they were coming from a more like a jazz, blues and jazz background. So they had drum sounds that were very open and, uh, you know, it was a organic, uh, big sound. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, there was resonance. So I think these kind of sounds I, I, I really liked, you know, at the time. So that's that's my idea of a good drum sound. And then came the 80s with drum machines, and then, <laughs> and and then you know everyone is triggering to make a fat big uh, impact, you know, with the drums. In the air and, tonight ruined everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, a little bit, a little bit, but you know, you know, with um, with, uh, with drums you can go so many different ways, and this is just the way that I think fit uh, our music. Drums is a, a part of the music, but it's not supposed to be in the very front, you know. So, uh, so this is this is the way we do it. <laughs> As we're talking about the recording process, maybe you can uh, tell the guitar freaks in our uh, audience a little bit about the guitars or amps that you used on on this record. There was anything oh. new compared to the previous, or you you're sticking to your usual suspects, so to speak? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's not like, well, I, I, I have a lot, lots of different amps, but uh, this time I think I went with, in the studio, I went with two amps, basically. There may, be, may have been a third one, like a Marsh, an old Marshall amp, but I think generally I used uh, orange uh, amp, a 30-watt orange amp, and a, a, a small cabinet with... 12 to 12 inch speakers which uh i can get all the sounds clean sounds distorted sounds out of that one and I also use like a mesa boogie small amp that's actually called transatlantic believe it or not <laughs> nice <laughs> they made, made an app that's called transatlantic uh so it's it's both are our, our tube amps and they are like 30 35 watts and that's about what you need in the studio and I'm using uh, the Orange 212 with Celestian speakers. Uh, and I, I don't have any specific. I have a Neumann microphone that I use for tracking um, the guitar. Usually just use one microphone. Some people uh, like to use more microphones, but I think uh, the, the out-of-face problems suddenly arrive. And I just keep it very simple, you know. Good guitar amp, a couple of pedals, maybe a booster pedal or a wah-wah pedal, and uh, I go with uh, with the Neumann microphone, good cables and good sound interfaces, and mm-hmm. try to keep it very, very basic and very clean. And then if you have s- sounds that you like, 
uh, then you can always, I mean, in the mix, you can add whatever delays and and reverbs and uh, phasers or whatever, whatever you want to have on the guitar sound. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically my guitar, very simple guitar setup for for recording. Cool. Yeah, we, we covered that the technical aspect of the production and the other aspect that comes before, actually, that would be the songwriting. So mm. Islands is the 14th Flower King studio album, if we don't count the Flower King. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you you're probably right. I haven't counted them, so so you're. I'm having you I'm having the Prog Archives page, uh, okay, uh, open okay. here, and yeah, it looks like it's the 14th. Uh, so yeah, you've you've been at that for a while now. Yeah. The Back in the World of Adventures, the Flower King's debut album was released in 1995. Yeah, so that's cool. 25 years now. Um, so when you start writing new music how how do you where do you get your inspiration from how do you keep things uh, fresh for for you uh in the songwriting department well may i i i don't know actually i i think that the trick is to just do not have any rules at all i i it's it's not like i'm 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 a lucky person because I I have my studio at home. So in my my uh, apartment or in my house, I have you know all the guitars and amps and stuff like that, and I have my studio. Uh, uh, so I can go in here every day and I can spend time trying things out, writing songs. Usually when I sit down, it's not with the guitar, which is kind of odd uh, because I'm a guitar player, but I usually sit down with the keyboard. So I just uh, call up like a piano sound or a Fender Rhodes sound or something like that and start uh, just, you know, noodling around and find a few nice chords. And uh, I do that, uh, I would say certain times or certain periods of time I just set aside for for in the middle of you know not touring not releasing an album there's always time when I don't do anything specific and th and then I try to use that time to be in create because there's always going to be uh, in a couple of months there's going to be an album coming up or something that that we need music for and even if that's not happening I, I always enjoy just being creative because I'm involved with different bands and different projects. And there's always going to be a time when someone asks for, do we have any material? And I'd like to, to have something to present. And, uh, and as I said, even if it doesn't go anywhere, I I'd, I'd still like to just be here and create something because that's where every, everything starts with the creation of, of an idea, you know, a song. So I try to do that kind of with uh, with a kind of strict discipline, you know. So just go in here and start playing something and recording it, and then I put it aside, and then I cannot really judge. Because when you start recording something or playing around with uh, some music ideas, usually uh, you you can get excited about it but you never know until maybe a couple of days later if it actually was good maybe you you you, you were just in a very good mood and it felt like some great idea and then you listen back three days later and it just sounds like crap you know <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know or the other way around maybe you're a little bit low or depressed or whatever and you record something and and it turned out to be uh, something very I mean, powerful or something that really has a good melody or a good good uh, vibe, and you know. So I, I I rather leave it. I just I just create, and then I can judge later, and then I can ask other people, my friends or my my colleagues. Uh, they probably tell me if it's good or <laughs> we should. And I, and normally, I mean, there 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 might be songs that. Let's see. For for instance, there's uh, 
oh, uh, there's a song called Morning News on this new album. And, and that, that song was basically, I, I probably wrote in about half an hour. So that one came really easy. Everything is falling into place and there's nothing added or nothing changed, you know, in the end. But, but the more progressive or symphonic songs sometimes takes a bit of time and you, maybe you go back a year or half a year later and you listen to it and then suddenly you, you get this bright idea, oh, I should move this part and I, I make an intro for this and uh, put in a little bit of a instrumental interlude somewhere, you know, and, uh, and then it, the, the song feels complete, you know. So I, I just trust that in time everything will fall in place and I shouldn't worry too much about making that hit song or prog hit or whatever. <laughs> Uh, every, every time you sit down, because that that's too much pressure. I know I know people that that work that way. They just sit down and whatever they come up with, it's not good enough, you know. And so that's a kind of a, a limitation. They or they they the, kind of a censorship, you know, that is destructive. And that's not the way I like to work. I I just work with music, and and if it goes nowhere, it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. I have, I have plenty of that stuff that never went anywhere. But also I have plenty of stuff that went on albums, you know. So, yeah. Speaking think, speaking of which, I mean, the Flower Kings are one of the prog rock bands that boast a huge discography with with lots of double albums and lots of long tracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, Islands is also a double album. But looking at the track list here, actually, most of the songs are not even five minutes long or five six minutes the longest song is solaris with nine minutes if i see it mm -hmm. correctly here um right so yeah <laughs> when when you set out uh, writing a, a record do, do you it, as you just said you you um you trust that everything will fall into place but do you at one point do you sit down and make like a st sketch in your mind of the whole album and you think hmm, it would be cool to have a longer track on there or you just yeah. see where it, where it leads you <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much uh, just let the music speak and and go wherever it want to go uh, i think and the difference between this album and, and other albums where we have longer songs is is not that big it's it's more like a construction that that was uh, kind of a decision I tried to propose <laughs> to the band because normally we would have lots of ideas and then we take the ideas and we tie them together to form a longer song. So if you look at this album, you have the musical ideas that come back later, you know, and there's even lyrical themes that coming back or phrases from the vocals that are coming back later in the album. I think that the difference between this one and other typical Flower Kings albums is that then we we took all these ideas and we put put them in like the the the, the biggest song of them all Garden of Dreams from 98 I think that was almost one hour long but in reality it was I don't know maybe 15 songs something like that you know that we stitched together to form this epic so uh, it it was we, we just went on, you know. We started uh, writing the beginning, and then we we had another idea, and we just tagged that one on to the the big song, and then we just went on day by day for a week or ten days or something like that, and just put in other ideas we had. How can we fit this bit in, you know? And and sometimes just improvising and making up new sections and. But they're basically just different songs put in the context of one big song that's called Garden of Dreams. As for this album, we just took the ideas we had and we, by title, we separated them, you know. And we could have, might as well call just one song, Island, and, you know, and that would incorporate whatever, eight or ten songs from this album, you know. And then you had, suddenly you have like a 35-minute uh, song. So, so I think that's the big difference. It's, I mean, the music in itself is the same concept as always. We present different themes, 
sometimes replay the themes later in the album, sometimes reconnect with lyrics and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Mentioning the lyrics, uh, would you like to enlighten us a bit about the themes you talk or rather sing about on Islands? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how to describe the way I I've been working the last couple of years is kind of uh, the same way that the music uh, come up uh, in a more spontaneous way, more from improvising, from me getting in here and, and start just playing the piano or on the guitar uh, with nothing, you know, no idea really, nothing uh, set to say, okay, let's create something like this or let's let's write this kind of whatever 12-minute song. So the lyrics are basically just me listening to the music and then I, the last couple of years, I've, I've been just putting up a microphone. I don't have a pen or a paper. Uh, I haven't written down anything. I just listen to the music and then the, the first idea that comes up in my mind, I I just start singing, you know. I mean, there's there's one song on the this album that's called Tangerine, and that was just like an instrumental little synth thing, sequencer thing that Zach sent me, and he said, do whatever you want to do with this. And I just took the song and put it in and listened to it a few th times, and then I put up the microphone and then I, the first word I started seeing was tangerine <laughs> and I was not I wasn't meaning really to use that in the end but but I kind of liked it the, the song itself has kind of a positive sunny vibe you know and I, I probably just saw this tangerine hanging from a tree and and thought that was <laughs> something I could sing you know and uh, and then it it went from there, you know, and I was thinking, oh, what what is the tangerine? Okay, this okay, and then that's like a symbol of 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 the sun, you know, in a way, and the sun that is the condition for everything living on this planet, and it just evolved from that, you know. But all that was very spontaneous, uh, nothing written down. I just sang whatever entered my mind. And, and, of course, sometimes you go back and you might change a phrase or you you, you uh, come back the next day and listen and think, oh, maybe that, that sounded a little bit silly, and you do something else. But generally, this is the way I've created most of the lyrics for this album. There might have been something. I think there's a song called Broken, and that's something that that uh, Jonas came up with the initial idea of the voc first vocal part and he sent something and he he had just made up some silly lyrics uh, but they didn't make sense to me and so then I, I actually sat down and wrote you know on paper I was thinking what what is this song about you know and it, it's basically about any form of addiction could be alcohol or drugs or or your mobile phone or or gaming or <laughs> yeah. whatever there's lots of addictions or food or you know whatever but generally speaking i would say lyrics come up in the same spontaneous way as the music which is a formula that actually works for me i think you know and you can always go back if you improvise with words and you sing it then you can always go back later you know and change a few lines or and uh, i think that's even vocal takes that I did spontaneously. So what you hear on the album is actually me singing or improvising something, and I kept it. I didn't even re-sing it, you know, later. I just kept it because it sounded good as it was. So it's uh, it's a different way. I didn't do it like this for, uh, for about 10 or 15 years. I was more like, you know, I, I want to write it down. I want to know what I'm going to sing. I, I want to be safe. You know, I want to check with the guys if they like the lyrics, et cetera, et cetera. But, but that changed over time, you know, and, and it, it works for me right now. I can tell about later five years. I probably do it in a different way, but right now this works. There's a ve very interesting uh, approach to, to yeah. lyrics writing in, in particular that I didn't uh, expect <laughs> uh like this um uh, but yeah ve very very interesting and uh as this interview opportunity came up uh 
quite spontaneously or rather short notice. I mm -hmm. haven't actually listened to Islands yet, but now that I know the mm -hmm. story behind it, I'm of yeah, course know, yeah. cu yeah. curious um, uh, to to listen to it and to check it out. Mm -hmm. Um, before we wrap this interview up, uh, mm. what, what are the next plans, uh, for you personally, um, maybe also outside of the Flower Kings? I mean, you mentioned Transatlantic a couple of times yeah. already in this interview and we had Neil Morse already on the broadcast a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago. So maybe that you, you, uh, can tell us a little bit how far along you guys are yeah. in the planning planning of the next stages of transatlantic as well yeah yeah i mean there's certain things i can tell and there's certain things that i cannot tell yet uh, so yeah we are in the mixing process so right now we're listening to mixes uh and that might take some time it's uh you know there's always little adjustments that we like to make and we you know we take our time you know to to make sure everything is in balance and, and uh, presented the way we think it should be. I mean, who, sounding like who, transatlantic. Yeah. Who, who is mixing it? Uh, Rich Mouser. Ah, okay. he, he, yeah. He's I, mixed every album okay. up to now. So, I, yeah. I, I, uh, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Rich All is right. he's a great guy, uh, making great sounds. So that i can tell i cannot we do have a title for the album but i cannot tell it and we do have artwork for the album but i cannot speak about that um uh, so i mean what can be told we started about a year ago here in sweden actually playing the basic basic tracks and writing the music and it's been a long time but we have over over this time we've done other stuff of course i think they They went out with Flying Colors, and Mike's been out, I think, playing something else. I can't remember now. Maybe Winery Dogs. Uh, and I think possibly Neil's been out doing some touring also. Uh, so, yeah, it, it took some time, and uh, but slowly we're getting all the pieces together, and <laughs> and now we're at the point where Rich is mixing it, So it uh, and we're putting together everything, you know, with the artwork and... So, uh, so I think Trans Transatlantic yeah. are known as a band that y you you guys work together. You you really come together in the studio and yeah. write all mm -hmm. together in the same room. Yeah. Was it the same for the new album, or uh, was it finished before this whole uh, thing happened? <laughs> yeah, we start we started actually September last year, and and by then we didn't know anything that was called Corona. So so se September was all good. So. The guys came here to Sweden uh, to a studio somewhere in the south of Sweden, and uh, we worked for ten days writing the album, you know. And uh, and then everyone go home, of course, and we do overdubs over time and change stuff and come up with new ideas and uh, rewrite and uh, do new overdubs. <laughs> It's a long process. Okay. So, but but now we're finished and and Rich is mixing it. So yeah, I, w I would think probably sometime next year, beginning of next year, February March would be release. Cool. Oh, that's, uh... um, yeah. So that that's that kept me busy for a while in the middle of everything, and uh, also I've sort of opened up the book again with uh, with John Anderson, the second album that we started working on. Oh, two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's kind of halfway. Also, I mean, th there's lots of material. There's probably more uh, more than an hour of music. But I think looking at it, at least there's uh, half an hour, maybe thirty, thirty-five minutes of really, really good music. So, so I'm I'm excited about that. Also, so I I guess I'm just lucky being able to do different things and different bands and different styles and uh, keep busy working because mm -hmm. that's that's what i like doing you know being creative and uh, and i have uh, i have the the luxury <laughs> of having my own studio and and doing this for all time and, and for a living you know so i, I would say the, the the corona thing i know it, it lots of musicians suffer you know in, in the economics and everything but for me it hasn't been like that 
because as you say we have 14 flower kings albums there's four transatlantic albums and the other albums with c within and john anderson etc etc kaipa so for me <laughs> in the big picture and all the albums i made it's it's like a, a kind of a cash flow coming in from these all these products so yep. i don't have to worry about not being out touring that, that doesn't affect yeah that, that yeah. En enable you to keep writing music <laughs> oh yeah and keep, yeah keep, because keep, yeah Awesome, great! You just yeah. mentioned uh, that you you love the fact that you can explore different genres and different styles with different mm. projects and bands. Now, to yeah. to wrap this interview up, we have a little section in our podcast that we like to call mm -hmm. "What's in Your Walkman." So, oh, wow. I, I would I would like to ask you what you've been listening to lately. If there's anything that stood out that you would like to recommend to our listeners and that we can add to the playlist to the accompanying okay playlist. okay well honestly because i've been working so hard for the last five or six months you know with with all this i mean with transatlantic with our kings uh, there hasn't been much listening to other stuff but i've been sent an album by a guy called uh, joe Payne, and he's he used to be the singer in uh, the band enid yes you're I familiar with them yes i saw them i think i saw them at the night of the Prague once if i'm not mistaken oh, yeah yeah that, that's that's possible i mm -hmm. i don't know if he was in the band uh, i think at, it was at... still in the band i think it was one or two years after uh, i saw them with him that he quit the band but i'm yeah. not not that uh I'm not an active follower of the band. I know of no, no. them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, but but I, I got this album sent, and I I've, the the last week I've been listening to to the album, and it's uh, I, I I would say it, basically I'm a, a big fan of his style of singing. Yeah, he's a, so, he's a very good singer. I remember that. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. and his range, and I'm just I just mm -hmm. marvel at the fact that he's not. <laughs> I said this guy could go to the stars. I mean, in the in the right context, is is an amazing singer. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just the way the guy, the the, the other guy, young guy that that uh, uh, became the lead singer of Queen or with Brian May and, and Roddy Taylor. I mean, this guy, I just listening the way he sings certain stuff and the range and and when he goes up in the falsetto, it's just amazing. Uh, so I've been listening to that, you know, and and I've been listening to some of the other YouTube stuff that he did with with Enid also, but that's pretty much it, you know. And and uh, maybe there might be something I I listen to some Coldplay album. I think I can't remember the name of the the album now, but that's pretty much been my <laughs> my listening habit. Okay. And I have to say, every now and then I go. And watch some of, um, oh, what's the name of that? Yeah, the Snarky Puppy. Are you familiar with Snarky yes, Puppy? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are amazing. They are amazing, and that's if I if I need like a little bit of a push and to be enthusiastic or happy about being a musician and and the joy of just pure playing, you know, music and and guys that are not a product or not an artist made for being you know for profit i know i yeah. just go watch these guys and i just remember why i started playing music you know and i see the interplay with these guys and you have Corey henry who's the organ player is just fantastic and and great drummers and great interplay and just lift me up so that that is a band that i I, I suppose there are albums, but I don't have any albums. But it's now it's so easy to go and just listen to YouTube, and I, I just sit there with a big smile on my face because yeah, these yeah. are so freaking good. You know, it's so so much joy in the music. I can absolutely relate to that. Um, yeah. I have also uh, three little recommendations for uh, this episode's "What's in Your Walkman" section, and the first one would be actually somewhat related to the flower kings it's a new album called the backstage from three guys one is jonas reingold of course the flower kings bass player then craig blundell uh amazing drummer of course and rob townsend who also plays on the new flower kings album uh, right 
yeah and i think you also have a, do you have a guest spot there because there's so I many do. guests i, I, <laughs> returned, I returned the favor rob <laughs> said oh i want to play on your album <laughs> And I, I said, yeah, I can play on your album. <laughs> cool. So I played on it, and, and we have Steve Hackett, and we have, uh, oh, my goodness, there's lots of people. Andy yeah. Tillerson is there, I think. and uh, uh, um, Luke Maschin, I think, on the... on the Yeah, Luke on, Luke is on it, too, you yeah. know, and uh, Pat, Pat Mastelotto. There's lots of yeah. great musicians on, and, and on a, the album. Amazing fusion album, lots of fun as well. So this kind of fusion... Uh, is definitely music that brings also joy to my face visibly as you just uh, ah. described with snarky puppy yeah. and ah. um two more uh retro proggy uh, new uh, songs from norway actually there's a new single from the band called ring van mobius called illuminati oh. and wobbler are also bringing out a new album in october and the lead single for that was five rooms so there's also really cool prog rock stuff that i will add yeah. at the yeah. end of the the playlist of course after all yeah. the new flower kings um singles for the album islands and a, a little best of flower kings uh, <laughs> set L let's see how how ex extensive it will get Yeah, <laughs> that, that will be hours and hours and hours. <laughs> I think that can escalate quickly. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna ask my good friend Michael Shetter from Generation Prog Records to uh, compile a, a nice Best of Flower Kings um, playlist because he, I know he knows the the your discography way better yeah. than I do. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for being on the show. It was a r really nice and and interesting talk. Uh, all yeah. the best with with your upcoming releases, starting of course with the new The Flower Kings album, Islands. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. Take sure. care. I'm Thanks. looking forward to yeah. to your next projects, Transatlantic, and then of course uh, the new stuff with uh, John Anderson at some point yep. down the <laughs> down the road. Um, yeah, take care. Uh, keep. Uh, creating and keep your joy of creating and joy of the music uh, with the Sorry. music <laughs> yeah yeah thank you very much thank you and as always take care of your loved ones take care of yourselves and listen to great music the progcast is a production of stewis media and is presented by the prog space It is produced by Randy M. Salo, Janine Stango Lewis, Blake Lewis, Kai Metzner, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not an Elephant.